Welcome everyone to another episode of Math Conversations. Today we have a very special guest joining us, Ethan Wright. Ethan is a visual media studies major at Duke University, and he's also he also has a fascinating YouTube channel. Welcome to the show, Ethan. Glad to be here. Yeah, it, we also it's also great to have you here. I've also had the opportunity to explore your YouTube channel, and your content is captivating. Can you please tell our viewers a little bit more about your YouTube channel and what you do in it, so that they can like know a little bit about you? Yeah, of course. Um, so I do like college lifestyle stuff. I'm a sophomore at Duke University, and um, you know, I in high school I kind of grew up watching a bunch of like college vloggers. So I always knew like I wanted to be on the other side and do that. So I'm doing. I'm just. Um, giving high schoolers a look into college life at Duke um, and then also just making fun videos on the side. Okay, so okay, so you just it's just like vlogs and stuff like that, right? About talking about how your college life is. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that's that makes sense. Yes. So um I, like what would you suggest that students um who are like who want to study visual media studies at college, like what would your advice be to them? What do you think they can do and what are some of the skills they can develop in high school to prepare themselves for this major at college? Yeah, sure. So just for some background, I am pursuing a visual media studies major, which for me was kind of the closest thing to marketing. Duke doesn't have any marketing degrees or like business degrees, um, but they do have visual media studies. And, you know, I've developed a passion for media, obviously, I have my YouTube channel and just, uh, engaging people's attention like through a media uh medium so uh actually the the most recent class i've had um there's one it was called uh it's like digital history or something and we were looking at the history of duke and just history in general um through like a media perspective um and that actually had a lot of um kind of engineering aspects to it because um you know, historians, when they're trying to best convey uh, history, they're making like 3D models of, of uh, statues of these historical buildings, right? So we were there like learning how to use, uh, it's called SketchUp and um, a, lot, a lot of engineering applications with that. Um, so I guess my advice would be, there's a lot of fundamental math skills uh, involved with visual media studies. There's a lot of uh, English skills, you have to be able to read these obscure passages and be able to understand that. Um, and then also, you know, on the like more media side, there's also like Photoshop, uh, Premiere Pro, just being able to be able to use those. Okay, so yeah, so like this visual media major has a lot of applications in several fields, right? Like engineering, English and math, like how you told us. So yes. you, you would just suggest that students like just keep doing what they're doing and take higher level math and English courses so that they can prepare for themselves. Is that what? Yeah, hundred percent. Just keep yeah. doing what you're doing. Um, you know, try to challenge yourself. That's really important, especially for college in general. They want to see you challenging yourself. So if you're able to take those higher level math courses, engineering courses, um, that'll just benefit you in all aspects. Okay, so you also spoke about like Photoshop and stuff, right? So would you suggest that um our viewers who like are pursuing that major like learn how to Photoshop and you know use their computers for for media in a better way? high school i i would um i there's so much benefit to having like some skills right uh photoshop is a great skill premiere pro i'm a big premiere pro guy that's how i edit my videos uh and like i could get a job just editing videos like there's a huge just in this world in general there's there's huge need for real world skills and and these are big skills that a lot of people uh are looking for yeah 100 percent. like if you want to just make some extra income i would totally recommend that okay so like so it would help your major and it would be a great source of income yeah i think that's wonderful yeah. and i think that's some great advice to our students so um as you already touched upon before that you spoke about how you need to there are several math concepts you'd apply to the visual media major can you please give us like a brief overview of what math courses there are as this is a math channel and i'd love to talk about the connection between math and the visual media's major. So what um, mathematical concepts have you encountered in that major? Um, nothing too complicated. No calculus, fortunately. Uh, 
I don't know. I, I, I liked calculus. It was fun, fine. But when you don't do it for a while, you become out of practice with it. Um, so like I could talk about the uh, the 3D models, right? We're making 3D models. There's a lot of like basic calculations because you know you'll have like this uh, this blueprint of a, of a building, right? And you have to figure out how to convert like you know a 10 inch piece of paper into like a live scale 3D model. So just figuring out the conversions for that, basic division, uh, multiplication. Um, you know, there's and then there's there's also a lot of like angles that you have to figure it out just just a lot of like problem solving and like what calculations you'll need and especially um a lot of these old blueprints don't have like all of the uh measurements so you have to like figure out that might that that could be like where calculus is needed just to figure out these uh unknown measurements um so there's that application i'm trying to think about other applications um in in uh, premiere pro i will say just having like a basic understanding of graphs is really important, especially when you're starting to deal with like um, sound sound design. There's a lot of like waveforms and stuff you need to figure out. Um, uh, color graphs, when you're color grading, there's also all these color graphs that you have to be able to figure out. So really just a basic understanding of how to read all these mathematical um, formulas and stuff, and graphs. Okay, so like more more of just like writing and like solving your math problems. It's more of like a practical application. So you like it's more of mathematical modeling. So you use that knowledge and put it into uh, a model and like scale it up and down. So it's yeah, I think that's yeah. like a unique like way of you know like a unique application of math which you guys are using in your major. Exactly. Yep. So, um, is there any like mandatory math course that like visual media majors have to take? At Duke? Uh, not at Duke, no. There is three mandatory courses, but they're all like through the visual media studies lens. Okay. And there may be some math in it, but it's all like very visual media studies. Okay, so yeah. So like just nothing too like complicated and just basic math. Okay. Yeah. So um, what, like I now want to ask you a few questions about your college, Duke University. You know, it's one of the best colleges in the world and I'm sure our viewers would love to learn about it from a student. So what, yeah. Motiv yeah. So what motivated you to choose Duke University and like, what do you think is special about the place? Like what made Duke University like above the other colleges which you applied to or got into? Yeah, great question. I think for me, it is the idea that Duke is basically like a state school that has amazing academics. Like there is no other school on this level with like the community that we have. Um, you know, other schools say they do like the the Ivy Leagues, but you go to like a basketball game and there's like nobody there. Our basketball games, people are like camping out the day before because they're just so passionate about Duke, about the spirit. And there's like never a weekend when there's nothing to do, right? Like Like everyone's always going out we have a club nearby. Um, all the state schools around us actually come to our plate, our clubs to party, right? Uh, so like we we really do have that that spirit. But on the other side, it's like, sure, everyone knows how to party, but like the libraries are packed like every night as well, every day, every night as well. So it's like a, a really really cool balance between uh, working hard and playing hard, and that's something I really haven't seen at a lot of other schools. Just yeah. that that good of a balance okay so you're saying that like it it's set up you, you for you it like was set apart from the other colleges because it's a combination of like the characteristics of a private and like a public state school because 100 yeah, yeah so, it like, does it the, the best yeah so like for the games and stuff it's like fully crowded like a state school but then the campus life and academics are like really tough enough. so yeah, yeah. that's and, and not just basketball like any sport it's like a whole event Okay, that's wonderful to hear. So can you also tell us about what um, what you think a Duke admissions officer looks for in their students? Like, what do you think that kids can do to maximize their um, chances of getting in? You know, like, can you talk about some of the extracurriculars you took, which might have made your application stand out, et cetera? Sure. So, yeah, I can talk about maybe why I think I got in. I, 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 I'm not... I do want to clarify, I'm not an admissions officer, so I have no idea what they're thinking or anything, but I do know myself. I know my resume, so I could kind of 
talk about that. Um, and for me, kind of what stood out, I was uh, very big on clubs. So I, I was a fencer and I actually wrote about that in my essay, how I, how I was uh, doing fencing for like four years in high school. And I wasn't even that good. Like I, I would go in competitions, I'd be last place in like 200 people. But I was very passionate about it as, as I was fencing. And I think colleges could see that. One of the, one of the Duke essays is like, um, one, of the, one of the questions I had, it was like, talk about a community that you feel part of. Um, so I was talking about like my fencing community and just, I was able to display like my passion for fencing through that essay. And, and Duke is able to see it. it was like, okay, this guy's passionate. I know he can just latch on to things at our, our school and just really go forward with them. Um, I was also an entrepreneur. I had a lawn mowing business. Um, and, you know, I kind of came on, I originally applied as an e economics major at Duke. So, of course, having like that business background, I had this business for like five years. Um, I had a few employees. That was a, a great benefit for Duke as well. And it was basically just me like going really deep into my passions, right? So, um, yeah, a, a lot of people might say it's like be like well-rounded. And I say, nay, I prefer the uh, the very specific individual that you have like your points. So I was an entrepreneur, I was a fencer, and then I was also a great student. I was like number one in my school. Um, I had the academics uh, down pat. So yeah, okay. that's kind of everything. So you think like for, I think that's wonderful to hear. And I think so for fencing, you, you, you think that like it was your passion that got you into it more than like how good you were at it. And also yeah. I think that, yeah, the fact that you applied for an economics major and you had a business for five years like shows that you're like interested in that in that course, you know, because like owning a business like really related to economics and yeah, I yeah. think like, I I will say though, um, you know, I'm a visual media studies major now, yeah. and I I uh, the first couple of weeks of I I was taking econ 101, and it was very it it, it was very different than I thought it would be because it's very like theoretical, right? And as like this entrepreneur guy, I'm in the field doing all this practical stuff uh, and econ is just not that. So that's why I ended up switching for something else. Okay, so you wanted something more practical. Okay, so yeah, yeah makes sense. And yeah, you spoke about how practical your major is because you like make models and then like scale it up. And yeah, I think that's wonderful. So can you share about any unique opportunities or resources that Duke offers? Like are like the professors accessible and like, if you like don't understand like a concept or something, can you just go to the professor and ask, or like, are, do they like provide like textbooks that are the, like extra textbooks to practice and stuff like that? The Tejas, the professors are so accessible. Okay, it's crazy. It's it's so nice. Like, I you're you're like referring to them by their first name. You're like, hey, Jed, what's up? How you doing? Like, that's crazy to me. It's not like Mister. There's no Mister. There's no Miss. You, they, they, they like give us their phone numbers and we can just text them whatever so i have like my professor's phone numbers and i'm just like hitting them up when i have questions they're like giving me connections to stuff i needed an accountant for my lawnmower business and i was just talking to like my my business professors like hey do you know any accountants and he did and he got me through like it's insane how how, how these guys really want to see you succeed like they just want to see you succeed. So they'll do like anything in their power to help you. It's really, really cool. Um, another great benefit is, you know, if, if you're struggling as well, like mental health is a big uh, thing talked about Duke, where everyone's very aware of it. So, you know, you can literally just say to your professor, like, hey, I'm not feeling too good this week. Can I get an extension? And like, they'll give it to you. They're, they're very, very welcoming and, and um, been helpful to you. It's awesome. So yeah, it sounds like a great collaborative environment. So like your professors are more like people that just like advise you, but you can also like talk to them and just like, yeah, be with yeah. them. Yeah, that's like, 100%. that was really surprising. Yeah, I didn't expect that. So um, how would you like describe like a Duke student, you know, like what kind of activities do, do like most of the students at Duke do? And is there like anything popular which they do? And can you yeah. also talk about like some of like the student organizations or clubs which are there at Duke? Yeah, so what is the typical Duke student like? That is a trick question because we're so diverse, you know? 
the typical Duke student is literally like anything. Like it can range from like me, like, like this this media guy to to this uh nurse woman to this I don't know, uh basketball jock. Yeah. Like literally anything you think of, there's someone there. And that's that's super cool. Like, like, you know, I was trying to learn about what was I trying to learn about? You know, I if, if I need like a artist someone to like draw me something like there's like a professional artist there there's a professional dancer there's everything that you want it's just a huge uh, melting pot that's so awesome um typical clubs i can talk about some of the i i'm in this uh, one it's called duke student broadcasting and that's like a media organization we're um making short form content for like sports teams so uh cool thing about that i'm at the basketball games like right under the hoop I don't have to wait in line or anything. And I'm like filming all the, the basketball guys going to the NBA. I get like locker room access. That's just super, super cool. There's other clubs. Um, there's a there's a comedy club. There's an anime club. There's the lawyer clubs, the econ clubs, business, whatever. Most clubs are there. And if there's not a club there, uh, you can go and start one, right? Like Duke has a lot of funding. So they're just giving away money if you have a good reason for it. Um, so all all great things so yeah there's basically like a club for everything and um yeah that's i think that's wonderful here and like it sounds like a great community which is like diverse and like there's a person for everything you need so yeah, yeah. So, um how would you describe like the atmosphere and community at duke like do you think everyone's like welcoming like i think you already touched upon this before but you spoke about it with your professors what about the other students like are they like welcoming as well yeah yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say they're very, very welcoming. One thing that's just awesome about Duke is there's two campuses, right? There's West Campus, that's kind of um, main campus. But there's also East uh, West Campus where like all the classes go on and everything. And then there's East Campus. And this campus is just for freshmen. So like the, the moment you come in, you live in this uh, East Campus and there's like 14 dorms around. So everyone there is a freshman, Nobody knows each other. So it's just like a huge like melting pot to just make new friends. You know, you're walking to to to, to the marketplace, the, the dining hall, and just always constantly bumping into people in your year. And that's just such a great way to make new friends. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, cultural clubs as well, where you can like find your community, especially, you know, you, I'll have a bunch of friends from like um, all these international countries and they're, might be struggling to to come in and in the beginning just because of homesickness and everything and like there's a community for them um and just in general I, I everyone at duke is just always looking to meet new people um you know there might be like a stereotype that like duke kids are snobby and rich and stuff but that i really don't think that holds true uh, most people are very very welcoming okay i think that's i really like the system of duke you know like what you said that all the freshmen are together because i feel like all the freshmen are probably like looking to meet other people. So I think that makes it much easier to, you know, make new friends and like form a group and stuff. So yeah. hundred yep. percent. You spoke about, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I was just okay. congratulating you for being spot on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you spoke about how um, East Campus has like 14 uh, dorms, right? Can you please ex like go into detail about like the dorm system, like East and West Campus and, how are they structured? So like, are they like separated into blocks and like you mostly talk to the people in your block or and places like stuff like that? Yeah, so uh, there's about 14 dorms and it's it's all random, right? So you, when you get in, they'll just randomly assign you to a dorm uh, and you have a random roommate as well, which can seem like kind of intimidating, but it just makes for nobody knows each other. So everyone's just looking to meet new people. Um, and each dorm is kind of its own um, residence hall. So like you walk in and there's like this uh, this uh, living space, uh, communal living space. There's TVs, pool tables, couches. Uh, and like, you know, every night you'll just see people there and just congregating. It's just a great way to meet people. Um, and uh, some of the dorms are separated by gender. With the floors so you have like one floor it's all guys and one floor all girls or it's a, a mix and every dorm kind of has its own 
uh, little quirks, right? So I was in Southgate and we were kind of known as the best dorm, which if you ask anyone, uh, they'll say their dorm is the best, but like ours was objectively the best because it was the newest dorm. Um, so everything was the newest compared to all the other dorms. And um, what was I going to say? So yeah, I, I just I just want to put that out there. Southgate, awesome. Uh, so that's that that's a freshman dorms, right? And there's this whole system called Quad X, which is basically whatever dorm you have uh, your freshman year, you know what dorm you're going to be in uh, your sophomore year and up, because uh, the upperclassmen, which is basically sophomores and up, live on West Campus. Um, so my dorm was a few, it's it's few quad. And um, that's made up of like Southgate and this other dorm called GA. And Few is like this amazing dorm. It's a little older than Southgate or a lot older, but that's okay. Um, and uh, so, yeah, there's about like seven dorms or quads that are on West Campus, each associated with one on, on East Campus. And these are like even bigger than the the freshman dorms because it's just like everybody all years um and that's a lot of fun too because there's like tons of kitchens tons of common rooms just spread around each quad um you know they're right next to classes they're right next to everything uh and it's all the gothic architecture so you're literally like living in a castle which is just super cool okay so i think yeah that was a wonderful explanation so like whichever dorm you put into that's like kind of like your family and it's like a you know, like, like friendly rivalry between the other dorms. So yeah, I think 100%. Yep. Yeah, it's a great system. I have one final question. So with, with like your friends and stuff that you make at Duke, are, like, what can you do to hang out with them? You know, are there like many restaurants or like entertainment opportunities around Duke? Yeah, there are tons. Um, One thing that's very popular for Duke students is this bar called Shooters. Uh, that's like an 18 and up bar. And it's open like Wednesday nights, uh, Fridays and Saturday nights. So that's like a typical Duke thing to do, which is go to shooters. Uh, and it's 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 really cool. It's it's a really cool time there, especially because like you know the basketball guys will come sometimes uh, from Duke, but also like from previous years. So like like this past year, I was like partying with like RJ Barrett, Cam Reddish, and Trevor Keels, like some of these A list guys. I was we were just partying. Um, so that and Zion came like the year before. Um, so that's of course really, really fun. Um, you know, there's always like dorm parties going on just wherever. Um sports is always a thing. And then just hanging out around campus. We have a beautiful campus, we have an insane garden, insane architecture. Uh, so there's always something to do with your friends, and it's a it's a lot of fun. Okay, so yeah, so plenty of opportunities and you know just to be with your friends and enjoy so I think yeah so Duke sounds like a well-rounded campus and it's like a collaborative and welcoming welcoming and diverse community I think that's great and you've given us a great explanation so thank you so much for joining us today Ethan and sharing your valuable insights your experiences you know about your understanding of Duke University I think would have really helped their viewers and also your inputs about the visual media major and I think that's um that, that you know that was really helpful and yeah thank you it was a pleasure having you here today it was a pleasure being here thank you thank you so much yeah